today i want to share a story about my name see a little bit of confusion out there but i just think this is a good way to get to know me a little bit better needless to say i'm not an expert in hindu mythology but some of the stories i've heard tell me that dhruva was once the son of a king whose second wife refused to countenance letting him sit on his lap as someone who was i think an ardent devotee of the god vishnu dhruva refused to abide by this injustice and marshaled all of his perseverance devotion steadfastness and fearlessness to enter a 6 month meditative trance with access to neither food nor water the austerity of this meditation shook the heavens and vishnu came down to ask dhruva to state his desire however having already renounced both family and all desires dhruva found himself unable to utter a word touched vishnu decree that dhruva could maybe become a celestial body visible to all the world forevermore that was terrible wasn't it how many of you disconnected show of hands how many how many how many wanted to disconnect the nicer ones out there <laughs> a lot of us make a few simple mistakes like the ones that riddle the story i just shared and these mistakes have two horrible impacts they reduce the credibility of both our message and us as individuals that's why christina jules fana and myself want to talk to you about powerful words today and specifically we want to share three strategies that can help make each of us better speakers the first keep it simple the second get to the point and finally be confident be direct to illustrate the power of these admittedly extremely simple techniques let me redo the story i just shared people often ask me what my name means according to indian tradition there was once a child who prayed so deeply he was eternally remembered as the the north star or dhruva tara and with that i hand it over to christina to talk about simplicity <laughs> so as dhruva was saying the first rule of powerful speaking is simplicity keep it simple often when we're nervous or if we're feeling insecure about a topic we're tempted to use really big words because we think it'll make us sound smart I'm here to tell you to resist that urge. And we'll start with a video of Joey Tribbiani from Friends. What you what you working on? Oh, Monica Chandler's recommendation. I want it to sound smart, but I don't know any big words or anything. So, oh, why don't you use your thesaurus? What did I just say? <laughs> Watch. Here, you uh you highlight the word you want to change. Mm -hmm. Uh go under tools and the thesaurus generates gives <laughs> gives a whole list of choices. You can pick the word that sounds smartest. Oh, oh my god, that's great. I'm smart. No, no, I'm brainy, bright, clever. I love this thing. <laughs> Look out, ladies. Joey Tribbiani's got the whole package. <laughs> so we've all been here. We're tempted to do this because we want to sound smart, we want to be credible, but actually the experts all agree that simple short words are much more powerful. For example, if you want to use the word utilize, how about just use? Or if you find yourself wanting to say commence, consider start. This applies for so many words. Think of every time you wanted to say assist or facilitate. How about just easier words are much easier for you to say and so you end up coming across much more polished and you'll get through your speech in a much better way but also easier words are easier for your audience to understand so i'll use an example from politicians <coughs> because politicians have a vested interest in you understanding what they're saying and feeling like they're credible um and smart and being persuaded And yet, I find that politicians especially get into this mess. 
So I'll share a quote by John Kerry. We need a new approach to national security, a bold, progressive internationalism that stands in stark contrast to the too often belligerent and myopic unilateralism of the Bush administration. I think I know what he's talking about, but that was a little bit of a riddle to say. And I also end up a little bit confused. Let's compare this with Barack Obama, also talking about foreign policy. Since World War II, some of our most costly mistakes came not from restraint, but from our willingness to rush into military adventures without thinking through the consequences. So much better. So simple words, they're easier to say, much easier for your audience to understand, but they also make you sound more credible. If you think about the best technical speeches you've ever heard, they were probably great because the speaker was able to distill the idea into its core, simple message. When you use big words, you just end up sounding pretentious. So to end the point on simplicity, we'll go back to Joey for a minute. I don't uh, understand. <laughs> Some of the words are a little too sophisticated for you. It doesn't make any sense. Well, of course it does. It's smart. I used a thesaurus. <laughs> On every word? <laughs> yep. Right. What was this sentence originally? Oh, they are warm, nice people with big hearts. And that became, they are humid, prepossessing homo sapiens. <laughs> with full-sized aortic pumps. <laughs> Simply don't do this. Keep it simple. And now Jules is going to walk us through rule number two. So rule number two is brevity. Get to the point. Now before we can learn how we can get to the point, the first step is to recognize our tendencies. So many of us have three tendencies that keep us from being brief. The first tendency is over-explaining. How many of you have remember the movie Clueless? Wow. Well, for those of you who don't remember or haven't seen it, it's a light-hearted comedy about a high school girl who's mostly ditzy, but sometimes brilliant. When the star was asked what Clueless is about, this was what she said. I think that the film Clueless was very deep. I think it was deep in a way that it was very light. I think lightness has to come from a very deep place if it's true lightness. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Alicia Silverstone at that time was only 18 years old. But how many times have we been in the audience and seen people over explain <coughs> what they wanted to say? Second tendency to recognize that all of us have. Under preparing. And I'm sure this rings true these couple of weeks as final assignments are piling up for all of us. So I wanted to share a short clip, actually from 1988, about a politician who was laughably underprepared. What he did, um, since we can't access it right now, was that he essentially said that um, we're in this uh, era. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. We're, we're not in this era. We fought in World War II in this century. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We didn't actually fight in World War II, and it was last century that we lived in. It was extremely <laughs> convoluted. And this is a politician who was standing up in front of a press corps who couldn't even show that he had properly prepared for this uh, interview. The third tendency is for us to miss the point. I think many of us, when we're having to answer off the cuff, tend to ramble, think aloud, and end up missing the point. And the video that I was going to show perhaps would have uh, be something that many of uh, us, especially those who are Americans, would remember. It's the video by John Kerry when he uttered the difficult, the memorable words, binders of women. 
So if you will recall, he was asked in the 2012 uh, presidential debate about how he wanted to make sure that women could have an equal place in the workplace. He rambled, he talked about how he had scouted for all many women to be part of the interview process, and he ended up with, and then I had a binder full of women, completely missing the point and being memed throughout the 2012 presidential um, election. But now that we know our three tendencies, what do we need to do in order to be brief and get to the point? So, it's just three simple steps. First, map your message. Remember the forest, step back and see the forest for the trees. What is the message that you want the audience to take away? Second step, start with your headline. Tell the audience straight out what the forest is, what your message is. Third step, trim away all excess detail. Ask yourself scrupulously, is this sentence necessary? Is this phrase necessary? Is this word necessary? And with that, hopefully, we wouldn't commit this error. I, as Mark Twain said, I didn't have time to write a short letter. So I wrote a long one instead. So with that, I'll pass it over to Fana to talk about the third rule. Confidence. Be confident, be direct. So the GSB coaches us how to dress confident, how to stand confident, and we will now add on that by showing you how to talk more confident. For this part of the presentation, I need your help. I need you to please listen to two examples from my teammates and help you decide which one of them sounds more confident. You up for that, Matt? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey's music video was so lovely to watch. I just wanted to say that Audrey's music video was so lovely to watch. Easy one, it's Juliana, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Our first step is drop the word just. If you use just, it minimizes your statement and can make you sound defensive or even apologetic. A tip to get over this is go back to your written communication, read through it, identify where you use just, delete it, reread the statement, and you'll see how much more powerful this sounds. Over time, take that tendency and transverse it to your real-time communication. A tip in case you use just, channel Mr. Fall Knight and Nike. And remember, just do it. So don't use just, just do it. <laughs> Let's look at another example. I'm no expert in this, but Bert's uh, suggestions for pitching were great. Bert's suggestions for pitching were great. This was an easy one, huh? Qualifiers. <laughs> 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 Drop the qualifiers. If you use qualifiers, you negate the credibility of your own statement. At times, we all have to give an observation or opinion that might turn out wrong. But if you start out by pointing out why you're going to be wrong, before you've said what's going to be wrong, you're just wasting words. So in the interest of time, I'm going to speed up a little bit. The tip to get over the qualifiers is remember, you are already qualified. No matter where you go, what situation, you will bring a unique perspective that will add value to that conversation. As I said, we have little time, so quickly, to get to Q&A. Another one to drop is, I think, rather use, I expect, I'm convinced, or <clears throat> I believe. Um, the tip to get over it is keep calm and rephrase. Take a few seconds, breathe in, and then say what you need to do. The last one is, I can't versus I won't. This one is much more subtle, but you can make a much more powerful impression by using I won't. It gives you the opportunity to claim agency, independence, and control. Can't is passive, I won't is active. The tip to get over this is remember President Obama, he said, yes we can, remember, yes you can, but you won't. <laughs> so for summarize, in summary, remember to, be, so, to keep it simple, to keep it brief, and to do it with confidence. With that, let's open it up for Q&A.